This story happened when I was 17. I asked my girlfriend on a date on a Friday night. I picked her up from her house, and we went to a small restaurant nearby because that's all I could afford at the time. We ate, then we went back to her house to spend some time together. By then, it was dark. She complained how our date night was short, and I told her I can't take her anywhere else that had to be paid for. We came to an agreement that we would go on a night drive. We drove in town, then we drove on some empty road in the woods. Eventually, the pavement ended and we were on a dirt road. I had to pee really bad. I told my girlfriend and she had to pee as well. We pulled over and got out of my car. For some reason, right when we got out of the car, we smelt an awful, indescribable smell. I excused it as another person who also pulled over to do their business. My girlfriend actually gagged from the smell. I told her that we would pee real quick, then go back in the car to get back into town. There was a little flat area that was the best place to piss at. We did our thing, and then we were on our way back to my car. But on our way back, we heard a noise come from the left side of us. It sounded like a twig snapping. I was afraid it was an animal, so we rushed back to my car. Before I had time to open my car door, I heard a scream of fear or pain in the direction my girlfriend and I just pissed at. I told my girlfriend to get in my car while I go investigate. She begged me not to, but I did it anyway. To make her feel safer, I locked the doors. I went the direction to where we were, and I heard that scream again. For some reason, I lost all of my courage to investigate now that I heard him much closer. But when I heard it, it sounded like from the same direction that my girlfriend and I heard the twigs snapping. Instead of going that way, I went on my phone, turned the flash on, then took a picture. Once the flash went off, I saw a man in a white shirt with black stripes with some blue tarp right in front of him. He was just standing there. I didn't hesitate to dash to the car. I unlocked the doors, got in my car, put it in drive and floored it. My girlfriend kept asking me what happened. She saw I was scared. I told her I would explain later. We got back to the shadier side of town and drove back to my girlfriend's house. We entered the house and went into her room. That's when I told her I saw the man with a blue tarp in front of him just standing there. I showed her the picture and she was just as creeped out as I was. She let me spend the night because we were creeped out and it was a Friday and we also had no work or school the next day. That was by far the scariest moment of my life. We aren't in a relationship anymore. I'm 23, she's 22, but we remain as best friends. Driving alone at night can be a number of things. It can be peaceful, it can be stressful, and sometimes it can even be downright terrifying. I'll never forget the time that I was driving through the back roads of Appleton, Wisconsin. I was on my way home from a meeting out of town and my car wasn't in the best shape, so I decided to stay off the highway and that's probably my biggest regret of that trip. It was around 9.30 at night as I rounded a bend before being forced to slam on the brakes. My car came to a skidding halt and stopped itself about three feet away from a man that was just randomly walking down the middle of the road. They had their back turned to the car and were walking away from me, and I got this painful feeling in my gut when they had no reaction to my car almost hitting them. I sat there with my foot on the brake as I held my breath, wondering if they were going to turn around, but they just kept shuffling forward. It was like watching a zombie walking from behind. It seemed like the person wasn't picking their feet up as they moved slowly down the road. I thought about honking to get them to move, but something in the back of my head was telling me to just get out of there as fast as I could. I ended up listening to that feeling and slowly pulled around the person and began to drive past them. I looked over to see if I could make out what they looked like as I slowly drove past, but I couldn't make out a face through their hood. I kept holding my breath as I drove past and then quickly made my way up the road before being stopped by a traffic light. I waited at the lights for a minute or so and I couldn't help but wonder what that person was doing in the middle of the road and why I felt so scared when I was around them. And then I started thinking to myself what I would have wanted if I was walking down the road and needed help. I wouldn't want someone to be afraid of me. I would hope they would help. So, as the light turned green, against my better judgment, I decided to make a U-turn to drive back to them and make sure that they were okay. I tried to calm myself down as I felt the pit in my stomach come back, 
but as I got closer and closer to the spot where I had last seen them, I couldn't help but feel like it was a bad idea. I kept driving, and as I rounded the bend, I was forced to slam on my brakes again. This time I laid on my horn as I found myself in the exact same situation as before. The man was now walking down the road in the opposite direction, so he was in the same lane as me, and once again, I only managed to stop a few inches before I hit him. The horn blared as I tried to catch my breath and calm myself down, but just like before, the man didn't react at all and just continued slowly moving down the street. This time I just sat and watched him for a minute, partially because I was curious, but mostly because I was too scared to pull forward and drive past him again. It took a little while, but once he was far enough away, I decided to pull a U-turn and just leave him to his business. I was about halfway through the turn when I realized I didn't swing it wide enough and needed to back up a bit and turn it into a three-point turn. When I stopped, though, that same feeling in my gut that was telling me to drive away told me to look out my window. I looked over to my right and was horrified to see that the man was now facing my car. His hood had fallen down, and I could make out a near-blank expression on his face before he suddenly started to scream at the top of his lungs. I looked down at the dashboard to make sure that I had the car in drive and then back up to the man who is now running right at my car. I screamed in terror as I pushed the pedal to the floor and pulled away from that area as fast as I could. This time, I didn't hit any stoplight and made it away from that man as fast as I could. I still can't quite explain what was going on that night, and all I know is that I'm very wary of driving at night now. It was late summer of 2011. I was almost 19 and was hanging out with my best friend who was a few years younger than me. We live in a very rural area of southwestern Virginia, about 15 minutes from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Around here, pretty much everything closes by 10 p.m., so you have to find your own ways to pass the time. But that was never a problem for us, as we could always find a way to have fun. The night started out harmless enough, first to the mall, then cruising the streets looking for girls, things any team guys would be up to. When that proved to be unsuccessful, we just decided to go bowling until they closed. We then went to Main Street a little before midnight, just to walk some of the back alleys, acting like the edgy badasses we thought we were. But we never felt like we were in any danger, as there isn't much violent crime in the area. After we'd walked all the streets, we got bored with this and decided to grab a bite from Waffle House, as this was pretty much the only late-night dining option at the time. After we ate and made a quick stop at Walmart, we still weren't ready to go home, so we set out driving around some of the backcountry roads. This was nothing new to us. As I said, around here you have to make your own fun, and late-night drives were always our thing. The stretch of road we were now on, I had only driven maybe once before during the day, though it wasn't far from where either of us lived. We just had no reason of going down it. While still in Carolina, the county doesn't really give this one much attention since it's so far out of the way, and there are very few houses on it. Since the road often washes out in the heavy rains, you have to drive much slower, and being as unfamiliar with it as we were, we were now traveling at a crawl. While we were both more cautious now, it still just seemed as any other road we would drive. The roads are essentially empty around here, and with only a handful of houses on this road, we were certain we wouldn't run into any other traffic. The road is mainly all wooded and sits at the bottom of a small mountain. At night, it's easy to overlook any of the houses on it. We probably would have missed them all. If not for out of the corner of our eye, we noticed a light burning. We both looked and noticed a man standing under his porch light. We couldn't make out any features of the man, but we could tell he was watching us, standing completely motionless, with the exception of his head following us. While we were both now on edge, we tried not to think much of it. We figured it was just someone stepping out for a cigarette, but it's just his demeanor that was so uncomforting to us. While nothing came from that man watching us, this was only the beginning. We gradually picked up our speed as we were becoming a little more unnerved the more we talked about it. Within just a few minutes, though, we came to the end of the road and we were back on the hardtop, road that I was much more familiar with and that I drove about once a week. We turned right, and we were feeling much better as we could pick up our speed and leave the thoughts of that man behind us. 
We enjoyed the sights from this road as it travels atop a small mountain ridge offering beautiful views of the town below. After a couple miles, we had reached the end of this road and made another right to make our way back to my house. This road is a little more wooded than the one we had just turned from, but I was even more familiar with this road as I drove or ridden it literally thousands of times before. As we're making our way back toward the main highway, we saw something up ahead in the distant reaches of my headlights. Deer are horrendous around here, so we figured that's all it was and slowed down. We began to notice it was much whiter than the brown fur of a deer, but we're both used to seeing the occasional albino, so still assume that's all it was. As we got closer, we noticed it was no animal at all. It was definitely a human, but hunched over with their back to us. They were walking in the left lane against traffic, as one is supposed to. I looked back at my friend as he asked, what the hell are they doing walking at this time of night? I looked back towards the person and could finally make out the shape of an older looking woman with long scraggly gray hair, wearing a white t-shirt and white pants. She still had her back turned to us until we were about 50 feet away from her. That's when she turned to us. We got the first look at her face. I don't want to say she was on meth or other drugs, but that's the look she gave off. Deep eye sockets with heavy dark bags under them, greasy hair, and very aged skin. I'm not sure how old she actually was, but if I had to guess, I'd say mid-50. But that wasn't the worst of it. She put her hands in the air and started waving them frantically and running towards us. When she did, we could see what looked like dried blood all over the front of her shirt and pants, as well as what looked like a big knife in one of her hands. We weren't sure what she wanted, but that desire to be edgy badasses was instantly erased. We floored it and didn't let off until we reached the highway. We were so terrified of the entire ordeal that what would have usually been a five-minute quick drive to my house became a 35-minute detour just on the absurd thought that she could somehow follow us there. In small communities like this, you know pretty much everyone, but neither of us had ever seen this woman before, nor did we ever again. We kept a watch on local news for any stories about a bloody woman being picked up, but never heard a thing. I can't even begin to come up with an explanation why she would be walking the backcountry roads at almost four in the morning, in her shape and condition, with blood on her clothes and a knife in her hand with all the risks of human or animal altercation she faced. Fast forward to present day, I now live with my wife on that peaceful road on the mountain ridge, between the two roads of the incident. I take the latter one on an almost daily basis and still have seen no sign of that strange woman since. But just earlier this year, there was a huge drug and cockfighting ring busted down the road of the watching man. I don't know if it was the same house or if these people were even living in the area back then. But after all this happened, I've often wondered if that was the same house. Maybe that guy was keeping guard on the place. As for the woman, I just hope I never run into her again.